Derby. It's Max Broken foul back to Bonanza down the rail. Mr. Expedient. Oh, it's the speed stretch approaching the wire, and it's going to be Smuggler's Hole to take the two fouls to the Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. And welcome everybody to ASD Live brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. Day 13 on the racing calendar. Let's take a look back at yesterday's racing action. Who was hot on the racetrack? Well, there was a few. First off, Jerry Gorno and Praven Badry. Both of them teamed up for two wins. And Badry had one more. So he got the hat trick on the card. And Demario Bino and Devin Gittens. They teamed up for two wins also. So in the jockey side, Antonio Whitehall still on top with 19. And with those three wins yesterday, Praven Badry in second and Demario Bino with the two wins at 10 in third. On the trainer side, Tom Gardaby Jr. with nine. Jerry Gorno after a little bit of a slow start, really heating it up lately with eight. Wendy Anderson with eight and Lise Pruitt right behind them with seven. Stretch, what did you see on the racetrack today? No real bombs, but uh, a few surprises. Yeah, it, it, exactly, and that's what I kind of compared it to. So Monday we did have some surprises. We had some uh, kind of bombs away come in that uh, uh, kind of figured, but we didn't actually twig on those long shots. The prices on Tuesday ranged from uh, $2.90 to $10.20. There was three favorites, a couple second choices in there, and I just thought it was – Good time to mention, you, you can't be playing the races the same way every time. You've got to adapt to the races, how they come to you. Some days there's going to be the favorites like like we had or lower prices, and you've got to bet it differently, whether it's an exactor or if you do like a long shot playing that. But you can't just be a, a long shot player because 
you're chasing those long shots, you could go for a couple of days without hitting one and then kind of run out of ammo. And then that long shot comes in and, and you've got nothing left. So uh, I don't like big, long losing streaks. I don't think you like lo long no, losing. No, I don't like those either. <laughs> yeah, so you've got to kind of cut your losses on certain days and, and play it a little different. And, and you adjusted on your pick four, just missed the pick four, but it is what it is. And uh, today's a new day. Make some more money today. And exciting, it's, it's show parlay Wednesday. I'm getting it today, Stretch. Uh, I, I'm just telling you. You're due. You're due. And so hopefully. Oh, I really do. <laughs> you really do. And hopefully people out there play along with us and try to outshow parlay us. All right. Let's kick off the card with a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bread. Phillies and Mayors three and up that are non-three lifers or non-winners of the year. And go six furlongs. Who do you like? All right. Four, four of the six uh, ran in this condition last time. And if you look closely, they were all within two lengths of each other. I'm not taking uh, any of them from, from that. Uh, my top two picks are not from that race. I'm going with the one that wasn't in the race and hasn't run in this condition before. Ran at the same claiming price. Understand conditions of the claiming price. This was uh, the last time was, uh, yes. No, that was against the boys, boys. last that's time. What I, thank you. That's what, that's what in my notes. Appreciate that. No problem. Um, and, and so now it's back to where the right condition when it runs. It's always competitive in this kind of level. Uh, and you're going to say, oh, look at all those seconds that he ha that uh, she has. Well, two of them lost by seven lengths back, and one of the other ones was against Melisandra, so that doesn't count as a second. Well, I guess it almost counts as a win when you're running yeah, against her. Yeah, that is a win. win. <laughs> so you've got two wins in three seconds, so that's I throw that right out there. The figures are there, and stock, and then take over is my top play of the pick. Uh, then I'm going to go to the three is my next one. Ran a nice race, very nice last race. Kind of surprised me a little bit. Was in post 10. Uh, I thought kind of had to need the lead type of horse. Nope. Chase took over and uh, went from there. I, includes the work, so I think the horse is going to improve even more. And she's certainly, I think, best of the rest with an outside shot of maybe upsetting the, the six. And the last one, I'll just go with the, the rail horse. Um, came up short last time. I think the horse should improve, but really has to improve the top two. So I've got it simply six, three, and one. Yeah, I'm with you on number six, Prairie Magic. Ran against the boys, and there was no way they were beating Not Afraid. You could see that horse in race number four. The horse that ran fourth in this race was Bite the Bullet Bro, who was a second favorite, was in the photo with Prairie Magic. It ended up coming back and made, making easy work of the field, winning by five. Now that she goes back against her own kind, the girls, I'm expecting speed out of her today. She showed speed in her first start. In an open five, non three, but unfortunately, not a great break out of the gate. And the stable mate ended up hitting the front end, so didn't want to chase too hard. So I'm expecting her to try and take this wire to wire. I do like the three Diane's wish. A lot of talent here and looked absolutely dynamite in that last win in the non two lifer. And that was wide open. Now comes back in against Breeds. You'd think this would be a, a little bit easier of a spot, but not with Prairie Magic. So I'm with Stretch. I like them as my top two. And I also like number four, True Kate. Ran a good second last time up, beating Barbie's Quest, Dazzling Gold, and HD's Hope. This horse, I expect to move forward as Freddie Ross. And he was a great percentage trainer last year. And again this year. So I'm going to give you six, three, and four. Now we're going to carry on to race number two, a $5,000 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, that are non-four lifers. They're going to go six furlongs. Number five, Doug's pal, will not run on Lasix. Stretch, what do you have? Okay, we have it a little bit different, but I can understand that. Uh, it's, for, it's obviously always tough for a, a claim, uh, kind of claimers to win three races in a row. I'm not a big fan of that, especially moving up in conditions. But, but this horse keeps improving, and uh, I think the horse can run the same race and might even be good enough to win the race. Northfolk uh, won yesterday, so that even upgrades the race even more. That's Northfolk, by the way. Thank you. What did I go with? Norfolk. Okay. Norfolk, yeah. Virginia? Is that, sure, is that where it sure. is? Okay. Yeah, well, I might as well keep my streak uh, alive. <laughs> I think the horse can stock, take over again, and uh, run back. We'll see. They have 7-5 to five morning line. I think it's actually going to be a little bit higher just because people are going to see that the horse is kind of moving up in class. Then uh, I'm going with a long shot in here, and that's Pucker. There is lots of speed in here, but I think this horse could kind of be the, the speed of the speed, but doesn't even need the lead. It can sit just off and make a move. 
um, is competitive at this level. A 12 to 1 morning line might sneak a price in there. So I'm going to use that one. And then the third selection is the one nice first race uh, along the rail, closing late. What was in allowance field last year, last time, or last year. Uh, I do think, based on my figures, the horse does have to improve to beat the top two, but it certainly can happen. No activity in three weeks does worry me a bit, but let's go two, three, and one. Yeah, I've seen a lot of speed in here the first couple times I looked at it, and then I looked at alphabetical, the four, a little bit more, and I think this horse is clearly the speed of the race. Everybody else is going to have to chase. This horse ran really well for 7,500 against Big Endeavor and Heavenly Trip. Only got beat by five in the end, and that's my rule. If you're within five, you're competitive in that division. Then it dropped to 5,500. Little Toe was just so much the best in there and had to chase on the outside and ended up tiring. But chasing those ones compared to 5,000 non-four lifers, night and day difference. Craven Badry absolutely on fire last night, winning three. I think he's going to shoot out to the front end. Play catch me if you can. I do like number one impressive sense also. Really good rally last time out. Came up the rail, took the shortest route, and ended up getting the win over Just a Buster and North Fork. And North Fork, as Stretch said, did come back to win after running second to drop a caribou the next time it ran. So impressive sense. I think fits really well because it has a good stocking style and the two drop a caribou. How can you not like this horse at least a little bit? One, two in a row. And as we said, North Fork, after that race, came back to win the condition also. Maybe that one's a little bit of a key race. So I'm going to give you four, one, and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. That carry over just under $200,000 for this allowance optional $10,000 claimer. For Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and up, we're going to go six furlongs. This is a weird one. Yep. Yeah, it's a weird race. It is a weird race. I, I'm going to start with the, the three as my top selection. I actually didn't see this race coming with such a huge effort. Getting no the speed. I, 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 had, I looked at the comment in the, in the little side notes, and it says lone speed. Well, it was lone speed because it went so fast. It went like a quarter <laughs> horse out of the gate. It's even surprised me calling the race. That's one of those where, you know, if you try and pre-look at it and you say, oh, this horse can never make the front. It was there easy. Yeah, and and so I actually double checked the program while I was watching the race. It's like, what? Who is that? And, and so anyway, um, but the key, if you do look back, that as good of race that was, and how so sharp. Look at the seven furlong race from Gulfstream Park was very similar. Those kind of figures didn't have the lead, but was right there in a nice competitive field. I think this, if this horse comes back to either one of those dirt races, watch out. I think it's gate to wire to the winner's circle. Uh, just such a good race. I was waiting for this horse to come back, and I've I've got her. So let's. Uh, and it's a huge drop. Huge drop. It is. A, it, it's a huge drop, but not claiming. So that's that's what I do like these kind of drops because they're not trying to get rid of the horse. Second choice is that we're going to go to the two. Um, this horse just couldn't get there the last time, but did lose to a, a very game horse last time. Um, both starts are very good. It's a, a game filly. Will will be stalking for sure. Won't be able to keep up with the three if the three does gun. But if 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 maybe the three can't get the distance and and uh, tires, maybe she can uh, kind of pick it up. And then I'll go with the six as my third selection. Nice first out. Uh, the horse does like to win races. Um, I I would have moved this horse up a little bit more if they were going seven furlongs. But if it gets the right trip, should be right there. Runs back to the form in twenty twenty two. Another reason you've got to like that horse. So. Two, six. Yeah, I'm with you on number three, Miss Z. Tested the best on the grounds and almost stole that race and tired very late down the lane. There is not a lot of speed in here. Miss Z is the lone speed. If she goes 45, she might have eight or nine on this field. I don't think she will be going that fast, but I think she will have a five length lead, and that's just going to be tough to overcome. I like number six, Dixie Moe. Reason I like this horse, needed that start first time out. Was fourth beaten five, but only three quarters of a length out of second. They weren't going to beat Kate's Princess. That first level allowance, I think it's tougher than it was than the non-three lifer. So Dixie Moe, I see room for improvement. Gets an extra half a furlong. 
Watch for some late run out of her. And I do like number two, Chicago River has run two absolutely huge races, ran third behind Wait a Sec and Kate's Princess. Wait a Sec ended up running a big race in the same race Miss Z was in, the cool excellence, as it did run third and lost a photo for second. And uh, Kate's Princess did come back to win. So that's my third play. So I'm like stretched a little different order, but three, six, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, a $5,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up. Going to go six furlong stretch. What do you got? Well, we got five of six in there, but I've got all I've got your horses on my pick four ticket okay, as well. You, you got Dino. <laughs> all right, here we go. Competitive mid claimer. Not not e- uh, certainly not easy, and I'm absolutely searching for a horse in here. No strong opinions, but let's go with the one. Uh, makes a big drop, but I think is is in the right spot. Ex- comes out of a couple extremely tough tough races that. Yeah, with some trouble as well. If you look back, it runs at the races at fairgrounds near the bottom, but I'm I'm just thinking that uh, maybe you can come back to that. I'm hoping it's not the track surface that's the problem with this horse, so I'll give this horse one more chance. I think I'm going to get a nice price. It's very dirtied up with the four races here. Just, uh, yeah, I'm certainly searching for one in here. And then I'll go to the six. Uh, this horse, not afraid, never looked like a loser coming out. I was happy to have some money and exactors with this horse on top because uh it was it was as easy as it gets for him uh it was a softer 5,000 field for sure was against the manitoba breads but did toy with them and so the horse is going to be that much confidence i'm using the horse in the pick four obviously i think the horse is going to be a short price so i can't really bet it to win but got to use that one as well and let's go to the four horse i've made money on this maybe just a bit of a a favorite of mine because he, he he's he keeps running so well. A game horse at this level's won at this level last year. Certainly can do it again. It's completely in the mix. One, six, four in an absolute wide open race for me. Yeah, I ended up going to number six, not afraid. I don't see a lot of speed. Yes, Den's a rebel, has a little bit of speed. But that was at the 4,000 non-winner or four lifers. Not afraid, did it against the breeds. But this horse has ran against some good ones last year. The 10 non three lifer, that was an awesome race. And then even the 5,000 wide open against Dazzling Mischief, who was hot as a pistol last year and competitive at the first level allowance. Not afraid, duked it out in there, only to tire late. This horse looks so good first time out. I think it's going to be a repeat winner. Number three, my boy Lollipop lost to X Checker. X Checker won that race for 55, then went up to the first level allowance. And one again, that's optional 10,000 just by a narrow lip at the wire, but ran a great race. This is in for the 5,500, and that's what the horse was claimed for. And it has tactical speed, so I expect it to chase, not afraid, every step of the way. And I take number two, Luckenbacher. This is an interesting one. Uh, was a winner from Fauner Park, winning for the non winners of the year. Came back, ran against X Checker and my boy Lollipop. Didn't run great in there, but didn't run bad at all. Fourth beat in seven. That was less than three lengths behind my boy Lollipop. So I'm thinking that makes it competitive. Now a second start over the racetrack. So I'm going to give you six, three, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number five, a $10,000 claimer. For three-year-olds and up that are non-three lifers. Going to go six for a long stretch. It's like a monster favorite. It it, it should be. Isn't uh, Lutenbacher one of your horses that you took last time as a small sleeper? And well, you didn't yeah. Miss I, that? I, and you wanted to go back just in case. Hey, I've already missed four this <laughs> so, week. This week alone. Yeah. I've missed four horses that I backed last week or last time they ran. I didn't made, back them this time. All of them got their picture taken. So and, you're uh, back yes, in, yes. I'm licking my wounds. Yes, it was a bit of an open book selection yeah, there on, on Including yours. that $58 <laughs> winner. All right. Roman <laughs> Union. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, big, uh, so here we go. Back to this uh, big favorite. I think there's going to be a, a fast pace in here, so you've got to find the closers. The big favorite is one of those closers, so it makes it this horse doubly tough. Uh, should get a great to- uh, stocking trip. I'm throwing out that last race. It was a tough field and in the slop. Thinking the horse didn't like like the slop that much, so if it, if you look back at uh, all the other races at uh, Turf Paradise and even two back in an even tougher field, uh, that should be good enough. Yes, it does have a lot of seconds, but the, the 
bunch of them are, are enough lengths back that it wasn't a, a type of horse that just hung. So um, not a lot, like I said, not a lot of necks or noses at the wire. That would bother me. And so I think this horse is going to be tough to beat just because of the race shape as well. I'll go to the one as my second selection. Same kind of thing. Won't be that far off. Um, and should improve. It was at the non same level as this one. Just lost uh, to Papa Whiskey and, and uh, Tara Watt. So Papa Whiskey came back in one. I think this horse uh, could be the slight upset in because just in case the six is that second itis or gets stuck behind some traffic and the one gets through on the rail. And then I'll go five as my uh, late closing one with that big duel. This horse will be coming flying late. You won't see him early. And just uh, has one at the distance. Uh, I, he's got to improve a little bit more to, to beat the top selection for me. But uh, let's go six, one, and five. Yeah, I agree. These threats, toil and trouble, dropping from the first level allowance. That race, two outs go running second to hard west. Would win this race probably by about five. The comeback race, 11 holes, sloppy racetrack. I'm a stretch. Throw it right out. Go back to that race. Expect two or three to five at post time if the horse runs back to that race. The speed is a three and four. They should bang it out at least to the head of the lane. And then toil and trouble should come with that late run. And I'm with you. I'm taking also closers. I went to number five, high rise in the peg. And number seven, kitten. Both for the same reason. They only ran once. I expect them to move forward and improve off that start. Yes, they got beat by the one, Armavir, but that horse had starts under the belt, already was making its sixth start. These made their first starts. If they improve a couple of lengths, that's good enough for me to get in there, and you're going to get a price. So I'm taking the five for a second, and the seven, who's very consistent, hit and ran fourth in there, the horse banged on the door all year long last year. Had one win, one sec, a couple thirds and eight starts. So I'm going to give you six, five, and seven. Now we're carrying on to race number six, an allowance race. The three-year-olds and up that are non-two lifers. We're going six furlongs. Scratch the five. Better make that two. Scratch. What do you got? Okay. I'd expect a fast pace. But oh, yeah. Yes. But let, let's start. It's, it's story time. I got stories oh, for you. Okay. It's story time. Yes. So, All right. Uh, so I'll, I, I will start with, I will, I will never dispute your race calls or calls of names because one, I've already got one wrong today. So, so I word on the street from my re extensive research department that Jeff Fafa, as you say, which is fine. Jeff Fafa. Jeff Fafa. That's what I say. Ah, Jeff FF is a bit from Jeff Dunham, Dun Dunham's comedian kind of bit with his thing that the, because he's got two F's in his name, it's just, why do you have two F's in your name? So that's just kind of a side note. I'm certainly not calling the races or going to try to say too many names. But uh, that's my little story time. It has nothing to do with my selection. Jeff. Okay, you, you decide how you want to call it. Uh, it's hard doing it, that. It, it would be call. very hard. So I'm just telling you. I, I, I wanted to switch, but I'm Jafafa. Yeah, go I'm with gonna go with that. Go with Jafafa, and then maybe in the winner's circle. Uh, you can change Jeff it. Fa -fa. Exactly. So back to the races. Here we go. So <laughs> this horse, this horse showed some solid speed. First race out just destroyed wow. the field. Impressive. It was impressive. We liked the horse, but not by that much. The next one, I, I did like Private Frank in that one, but this horse ran so game. And Private Frank battle. won by nine. The it's her start. First start. start. Correct. So this horse can go to the lead, but then also last year came off the pace. So I think this horse is just extra sharp. Got to use this horse for sure. And then three is my second selection. Could have been my top selection for sure as the solid figures. Um, this, the only reason I hesitant, this horse was entered for $5,000 at Canterbury and was scratched. Two starts ago was avoided claim. I'm going to be watching this horse in the paddock and just on the, on the track to see. If the horse looks pretty good, it might be a win bet. Obviously, I'm using this horse in all sequence bets. It's, it's a must use, and that it's just because of kind of those small angles that uh, worried me a little bit. And then the one is my third selection, Call the Cops. I use this horse most times. Always game along the rail and gets there, but not winning, Kurt. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's <laughs> eaten a lot of your money. It has. Right? So, so even you, place money. Place, even place money. I'll try show today. But uh, let's go two, three, and one. Yeah, I'm with you on the top two, Jafafa and my Noah. 
I ended up going to Minoa because Mike Tamporn, he's had three horses come recently. Fresh One, Terawatt, Mr. Dazzle from other racetracks. What in, what's in common with those three? They all got their picture taken. This one comes from Oaklawn Park. We've seen another horse come from Oaklawn recently. Well, a couple of them, Big Nick, that horse has won two in a row. And Chicago's Gray, the three-year-old, has also won two in a row. Oaklawn horses go and win anywhere in the country. This horse can go to the front, come off the pace. I expect it to be forward in here. I have it down to these two, but I'm giving my Noah uh, the little jump. So I'm taking the three on top. And to round them out, I'm taking number seven, I Love My Life. They're adding a tongue tie on today. I love equipment changes whenever they do happen. I'll take shots on those horses. Some of them run lights out after. And this one has been running good, ran second in a three-year-old open uh, first level allowance. And uh, only lost to Saxon Saga and then Chicago Gray most recently. This is a drop down to the non two life. So I'm giving you three, two, and seven. Now we're carrying on to race number seven, a $3,000 claimer. The Phillies and Mayors, three and up, that are non winners of the year. Go six furlong stretch. Another competitive one. Very competitive. We're closing it out with uh, one of those tough conditions, non winners of the, what do we got, six months? Yeah, non winners last six, six months. months. I say non winners of the year. I know. But technically, it's last six months. Yes, yes. It, yeah, you got it right. Um, anyway, certainly not really confident when, when you've got this kind of condition, but I'm going to take another shot here on, on the one horse. We've got Antonio ha has uh, her on the rail. I think if she can get out a little bit better, sit just on the rail. And uh, this might sneak up the rail, and if nobody really goes, this, he might just decide, you know what, I've got the rail, I'm going to go and keep going. I think you're going to get a nice price. You've got to find a price in this race. You can't be taking the favorite. Then I'll go to the three, two steps faster. I did take this horse last time. He ran well, was closing. If the race had been six furlong, she wins the race. Clearly second best, but she just, I, I know what she runs. She runs the same speed every time. So... If the other ones don't run to her speed, then then she wins. Just looking. And then I'm going to go the four. This horse opened with early money last time. Kind of surprised, uh, at least me a little bit, that that much early money. Broke a step slow and was wide throughout. Didn't show a lot, but just I've got to give this horse another shot going from a lukewarm co-favorite to at least 10 to 1. These are the ones that uh, go from there. Let's go. I'm, it's an absolute wide open race, one three four. Yeah, I'm with you wide open. As you can tell, uh, our, our three picks, quite a bit different. Two steps faster is kind of our key for the top three after that last great effort. In second, Harlan's commission. This will be another one of the favorites. Ended up running third, beaten by the three horse, two steps faster. Not a lot of speed in here, but I think there's just enough that they can battle it out, and Harlan's commission will be a part of your try. But I'm going bombs away on number six, wit nine. This horse made a big close from the back of the field. Yes, did get beat by six lengths in the end. That was going five and a half. Gets an extra half a furlong. I think there's a little bit more speed in here today. Because in that last race, it was just gold digging Darlin. Nobody challenged her. And she ended up going gate to wire. The wit nine with the little extra, well, distance, I think is going to be a factor late down the lane. Might have to hold your breath because it could be a late photo. I'm giving you a six, eight, and three. Good luck with all your selections this evening. I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing. And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's seven race card racing. Turning your programs to race number one, just a couple overweights, and they're on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs to race number two, in race two, number five, Doug's pal will not run on lay six. Now turning your programs to race number three, 
the Bridgeport Office Solutions Purse. Kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. Just some overweights. The jackpot pick five carryover just under $200,000. Turning your programs to race number four, the Adeas Mike Purse. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Just the lone overweight. Turning your programs to race number five, our VIP fan of the night purse. Again, just some overweights. Now turning your programs to race number six, scratch number five, better make that two. Number seven, I love my life, an equipment change will race with a tongue tie on. Now turning your programs to race number seven, in race seven, number one, Dacamo Rose. The owner should read Steve Kaplan Sr. Well, another gorgeous evening for racing here in Winnipeg. And I'm the pizza delivery driver again today, Stretch. Yeah, that's fair. I, I hit the pick four yesterday, so I ordered pizza. Oh, okay. And I was supposed to deliver it? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Yes, you did. All right. Under partly cloudy skies, the temperature. 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit. The wind out of the northwest at 21 kilometers an hour or 13 miles an hour. And the track is listed as fast. Fast race track for this evening's seven race car to racing. And we'll be kicking it off right here in race number one that goes to post in 17 minutes. never been to NHC, this is what it is, right yeah. here. This is awesome. There are going to be prices coming. This room is going to be nuts tomorrow. These players are unbelievable. This is your chance to be in the spotlight. When all eight tracks are in play, there's going to be bombs dropping left and right. There's going to be screaming and yelling. Hawthorne is probably the best value out there for cash tournament play. If you're serious about contests and you want to experience the NHC, you have to find a way to get to Hawthorne as many times as you can. You absolutely have to. The reason I think the Hawthorne contests are the best value in contests, there's no entry fee. Hawthorne is giving away seats. You have to play in those events because you know we all know what the cost of an online NHC seat is. I got some free entry to come out to Hawthorne, so I made my first trip and had a great time. If you're playing contests, Hawthorne is a great spot to be. You know, there's no take out of the contest. So it's a great, great place for horse players to either qualify here or play in some live money contests. Welcome to the Cinnaboy Nouns. Be sure to enter your name for a chance to be our VIP fan of the night. Ballots are available in the lobby. If your name is picked, you get the VIP treatment, including a $25 wagering voucher 
NASD t-shirt. A trip up to the press box to come watch me call a race. Head on down to the paddock to look at the horses. And then go into the winner's circle. And you're going to get a frame photo with the winning horse. Now on to racing. If you're new to racing, stop by and see Shannon and Brad at the Fan Education Center, located on the main level. They can answer all your questions about how to bet. And be sure to download the new app called Dark Horse Bets. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit and a free Dark Horse t-shirt. Scan the QR code on the front of the program cover or on the posters around the building to download the app now. Have a great evening of racing. Welcome back down the paddock here for race number one. We're kicking off the Wednesday car to racing with a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred fillies and mares. 
better non-three lifers or non-winners of the year. Gonna go six furlongs. Stretch, who do you like? Okay, let's uh, let's start with the six as a uh, top selection in here. We both have that as our top selection. Not the favorite, which is always a good thing in this case to get better value. Back-to-back, uh, -back, pretty good races. Uh, you made a good point in ASD Live about uh, not afraid. Take a look where that horse is running later today um, in, in the 5,000 or 5,500 open. Ran a nice race, stock last time, and then made a run, which I do like that. Normally, this horse is uh, showing some speed and backed up. And when the horse has been raided, I think if now if this horse gets the lead, will just be that much better in being able to be raided. So my top selection, I like the outside post. It's only post six. So if somebody tries to gun out there, that's okay. Badry can just stalk and take over. Yeah, and Badry did have the hat trick yesterday. Devin Gittens, two wins on the card. Another horse we both like, number three, Diane's Wish. Made... Uh, Made a good late move in that non-two lifer, and that was open on two to mow him down and win by a length and a quarter. Diane's wish now falls into the non-three lifetime condition and comes in with a really solid five furlong work in 102. This this horse was a winner in her very last start of 2022 in late September as a two-year-old. So going for three in a row, and after that last win, she's probably going to move forward. But this is the longest she's gone so far, stepping up to the six furlongs. That, that is a good point. Five to six is a big difference. I'll go to the one. This happens to be almost the longest shot. I thought this, this horse is, is better than that last race. I think uh, Antonio will have this horse probably sitting on the rail. Look back at last year. Has some uh, decent figures for at least this level. Was in some open conditions and was right there. I think uh, kind of the similar trip uh, puts this horse certainly in the mix or should not be 13 to 1. No, definitely not. Went off at 2 to 1, battled with Maybella, right while well, right in behind beside True Kate. And uh, I think the horse really needed that start. The way late down the lane, she had nothing left to offer. And I'm expecting a better effort also. The four True Kate, I liked this horse last time out. Was second beaten four and a half, showed speed, fell back, but came back on. And as you see, Fred Rawson still is yet to miss the board with four starts, with a win, a second, and a couple third place finishes. True Kate, she's always in the mix. She was six for eight last year, missing the board only twice, and once was on a sloppy track. The other, a terrible break out of the gate on the outside post, even though made up a pile of ground. An artisan dancer that day went right to the front, easily wire to wire. So definitely True Kate can be a part of this. For sure. I, I'll, I'll mention uh, Barbie's Quest because I usually this is my place or show bet uh, later on once they go a little bit longer. Ran a nice first race out. Uh, it was only a five and a half. And actually, it doesn't show that it made up, uh, it seemed to have lost lengths, but it made up lengths on the other ones. And I didn't think this horse would be even in the mix and ran a nice race. I think it's more of a, a show show play with, with the, our other selections, but uh, stranger things have happened. Yeah, I agree with you. She's going to be sitting last in this field and trying to make uh, that late charge if the speed backs up. And number two, HD's Hope did make a move in the race only to get tired. It was sitting fourth, made a move at Maybella, but uh, that cost her and she ended up falling back to be last in that field. But HD's Hope, best race, also good enough for top three. Let's go to our wagers here in race number one stretch. What do you have? All right, I'm going to kick off a pick three wheel. And we're going to go a $5 one, six with two, three, with two, three. It's total 20. If you just want to do a $1 wheel, it would be $4. And 20 bucks for me too, but I want the money, money now. now. I'm doing a $20 exactor, six and three. And of course, it's show parlay Wednesday stretch. So you get you go first because you you're, let me go yeah, first. You're, this is the first time you let me go yeah, first. Go ahead. What a nice guy you are. Yes, yes, and there it is right up there. Look at that fancy new graphic. There we go. Ten to show on number six, Prairie Magic for me and stretch. Ten show on three. All right, good luck with all your wagers here in race one, and we'll see you back for race two.
Cars are on the track for race number one. They're going to go six furlongs for $10,000. Number one is Dazzling Gold, owned by Starfield Stable, trained by Tiffany Husbands, with Antonio Whitehall. Number two is HD's Hope, owned by Robbie Sharp, Joe Yankana, and Will Loftus, trained by Shelley Brown, with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Diane's Wish, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds and True North Thoroughbreds, Trained by Michael Nault with Chavi and Chow. Number four, that's True Kate. Owned by Al Daly Estate Stable. Trained by Fred Rawson with Demario Bino. Number five is Barbie's Quest. Owned and trained by Marion Johnston with Stanley Shady Jr. Rounding out the field is number six, Prairie Magic. Owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Devin Gittens with Praven Badry. Post time for race number one, three minutes away. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls kicking off the Wednesday card going six furlongs. Looks like a match race according to the public. I'm going to go with the non-favorite, and that's the six on the outside. A couple nice races to, to kick off the year. Last race in, as well. Both were kind of press, uh, rated. Today, I think this horse is going to be on or near the lead, and that's her better running style. Runs like that, I think she's going to be tough to beat. Yes, I do like the favorite. This horse was in post 10, made a nice move, and won it. Bit of a price of four to one to maybe help your exactor. That's the one. Needs the rail trip to get through. Antonio can do that. Six, three, one. Kurt. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number six, Prairie Magic. I think she is the speed of the race also. You have a hot trainer from yesterday with two wins, a hot jockey who had three wins. This horse ran against the boys, back against the girls. I'm expecting her to try and steal it. And yes, I also like number three, Diane's Wish. Beat up on those non-two lifers in the open category last time out. I think she's in the top two. And I'm going to throw in number four, True Kate. As the trainer has yet to miss the board. I'm going to give you six, three, and four. Good luck here in race number one.
Dazzling Gold will be first into the starting gate. HD's Hope, the next to go in. The Hands Wish, the co favorite at nine to five, steps up and in. True Kate is next. Just two left to load. Barbie's Quest. And just waiting on the other co favorite, Prairie Magic, to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the outside, Prairie Magic away well, as is Dazzling Gold on the rail. Is going to be chasing in second. Back to third, Diane's Wish. Another length and a half, HD's Hope. True Kate to her outside, and the trailer, as expected, Barbie's Quest, about six off the lead. Prairie Magic cuts the opening quarter in a rather sluggish 23 and 2, and has the lead by four. Dazzling Gold on the outside in second, moving up the rail. HD's Hope, a bold, wide move. Here comes Diane's Wish to try and catch up to Prairie Magic. The trailers are still True Kate and Barbie's Quest. The half 47 and 2. They hit the head of the lane. Prairie Magic with the lead. Diane's Wish. Well meant on the outside. Going right after her. And now pokes a nose in front. It's Diane's Wish. She called her. She went by. And with the 16th of a while to go, she is going to get the win. Diane's Wish wins by two and a half. Seconds goes to Prairie Magic. Third to True Kate. And fourth to HD's Hope. The Stewart's supposed to number three, Diane's Wish, as your race winner. Second goes to number six, Prairie Magic. Third to number four, True Kate. And fourth to number two, HD's Hope. They went the opening quarter 23 and two, the half 47 and two. Five furlongs, a minute and two fifths. Time for the six furlongs, 114. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number one, that's number three, Diane's Wish. Diane's Wish is a dark bear brown filly, three years old by Nonios. Under the mayor, Esther's Wish by Stephen Godeven. Owned by A2 Thoroughbreds and True North Thoroughbreds. Trained by Michael Nault. And ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the six furlongs, 114. Number three, Diane's Wish, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Larry Falloon and Darren Bouchard.
Race one is official in the upcoming second race. Number five, Doug's pal, will not run on Lasex. Kicking off another pick three here in race number two. Assiniboine Downs has introduced a new Chase the Ace weekly draw. The progressive jackpot is guaranteed at $5,000 if you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets start at $5 and are available online at asdowns-cta.com or in person here at Guest Services or at the VLT Cashier's Cage on the second level. The draw will be made tomorrow, so get your tickets now. Proceeds do support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, and the Manitoba Lung Association. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace Ticket Program.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number two. We have a $5,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up that are non-four lifers. They're going to go six furlongs. Number five, Doug's Cow. Pay special attention. Will not run on Lasix today. Quick look back at race number one, Wild Stretch. It was just a two-horse race. But in the end, wow, Diane's Wish looked dynamite. She did look dynamite. The, the six got out relatively fair fractions and it didn't look like the jockey used uh, used her that much and then uh, the just a solid move i think the three uh, she's figured it out going from two years old to three year old and the the you know she showed it at their last race or last race of the year was a nice race and then a good race last time and I, this one was even better uh, i agree race. with that she's gonna be uh moving up the ladder i think okay on to race number two stretch uh, let's take a look at my top selection. That's number four, alphabetical. I do like the odds I'm getting right now at 701. And the reason that I'm getting 701, a sixth place finish and a seventh place finish, but first time out for 7,500, had to chase every step of the way, ended up getting tired, but only lost by five lengths, stepped it up to the five and a half, showed speed again against the wire-to-wire -wire winner, Little Toe, and got beat by seven and a quarter after it forced the pace on the outside. There is speed in here with the two drop of Caribou, the three pucker, and the five Doug's pal, but I think Alphabetical has more speed than those have to offer, so I'm thinking that Alphabetical just might get the lead with this big drop in class against non-four conditioners. I think this will be a good play today. Hey, well, you're getting good value, and that's what you're looking for because, yeah, a couple races. On a horse like this, you want correct. value. Correct, absolutely. You're not going to take six to five. I, I'd throw that out with six to five. Absolutely. I'll go to the, the two horses, my top selection. Uh, I'm not a big fan of a horse that, to win three in a row, but I just like how he's been doing that. Toyed with them in the first first time. Next race ran, ran a good race again. It was on the outside and just basically kind of took over. North Fork, the uh, came back and won yesterday. Looked good closing. I think this horse. You said you thought this horse might be on the lead. Uh, my opinion was this horse was just so much the best last time that that ended up on the lead. So we'll see. I, I'm hoping uh, he's not in, involved in the big duel because if he is, I might be in trouble. Another horse like in here, number one impressive sense draws the rail and took advantage last time out sitting fourth and then sneaking up the inside as just a buster in North Fork. They went to the middle of the racetrack. Impressive fence took the, or impressive sense took the fence and ended up going on to victory. The drop in class was what this horse needed. It was in the allowance levels. At the end of the year, dropped into the open non twos, got the win, got wavered in, unclaimable. Won the non three, big shot to win the non four today. I've got the horse in there, and it's the right running style. We know that you're not talking about speed, and this is your closer. I went for possibly the speed of the speed. I know Pucker can show a lot of speed, and and the, so the three is my second selection. I knew this horse would be a price. This is one of these horses that could be right there or, unfortunately, near the back of the pack. So it certainly wouldn't uh, be a, a show. Kind of all or nothing. Kind of all or nothing. Won't be in my show parlay, uh, but will be in my bets because – if this horse gets game and can when he gets the lead, didn't get the, li the lead last time, so it struggles, that's what you get. As a workout coming in, absolutely the right price at uh, 10 to 1 for me to take a shot with him. Yeah, another horse to look at, number six, Silent Musketeer. This horse was a road horse at Turf Paradise. Ran one race, and uh, that was last year for $7,500. And my cowboy was the speed that day. And ended up going wire to wire. Silent Musketeer couldn't get in. But this horse needs to get a start somewhere. I think it is this race. They waited for the six furlongs. Back to back, five eighths of a mile. I think this horse, this is the tightener for going longer. Yes, for sure. You, you want to get a race in for sure. Let's talk about the five. It's actually getting bent a little bit more than expected. Uh, horse likes to show speed. I don't know if it has enough speed. It's it's kind of up against it uh, where the others have had a start, the contenders that we thought. 
I'm going to watch one for this one and just see. The nice thing is this horse has been working for almost two months now. Way started way back in April 25th. Yeah, and a really flashy workout on May the 24th, 47-4. and four. Those two wins were at Mooseman Downs. Was a, a small race track in Saskatchewan. And uh, those were limited fields, but took quick work in them. But I don't know if it has kind of the speed. Pucker has always got the lead over Doug's pal. But that workout, that is an impressive one. All right, let's go to our wagers. Here in race number two, Stretch, what do you got? Okay, making a, a $12 exactor 2-3 and an $8 exactor 3-2. Not same same amount because we know what the payout is going to be. I think it's more likely to come 2-3. So if you maybe had $5 to bet, you maybe go $3 exactor and a $2 exactor. But that's what I got. And myself, I'm going after the pick three. I'm going to take one and four in here. Then I'm going to take two, three, six. Then I'm going to key the six. In race number four, a $5 ticket, $30, a $1, only six bucks. Good luck with all your wagers. Oh, yes, our show parlay. And I'm still alive. See, maybe that's I, why, I, that's I, why I, you, 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 you this is being new. out. This is new for you, yes. It is. Okay, so we both took our top selections. It's obviously a small field last uh so 10 show on two for me. Yeah, and uh, 10 show on four for me. I want to try and build a little bankroll. Good luck with all your selections, and we'll see you back for race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. on the track for race number two they're gonna go six furlongs for ten thousand three hundred dollars number one is impressive sense owned by true north thoroughbreds and arneson farms came by lee's Pruitt with antonio whitehall number two is drop a caribou Owned by Black Diamond Stable and Kenneth Lee Gardipi. Trained by Tom Gardipi Jr. with Ronald Alley. Number three is Pucker. Owned by Silver D Stables. Trained by Shelly Brown with Jorge Carreño. Number four, that's Alphabetical. Owned by Bill and Reed Mooney. Trained by Bill Mooney with Praven Badry. The five is Doug's Pal, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Devin Giddens with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Running out the field is number six, Silent Musketeer, owned by Lloyd Buffalo, trained by Jay Buffalo with Neville Stevenson. Post time for race number two in three minutes. And we have the HBPA Manitoba Best Turnout Horse. That's number one, Impressive Sense. Number one, Impressive Sense, the HBPA Manitoba Best Turned Out Horse here in race number two.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going six furlongs this time. The public's got it down to the one and the two. I've landed on the two. I think this horse is just running that much better and can move up to this level. I'm hoping for a stalking trip. Could show speed, but I think the horse is better just off the pace. Runs back to that last race. It's going to be very tough to be beat. A long shot that I've got is could be the speed of the speed. You need this three. If you chose the three, you're getting a big payout. Will have to be on the lead and go as far as he can. The closer of the field, that's the one. So it depends how you see the race. Speed or the closers, I've got two, three, one. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I like number four alphabetical. Here is one of the horses that does have speed in the race. The biggest dropper in the field from open company into this non-four lifer. I like both of those races, even though it was beaten by five and seven lengths. And I'm loving the value at eight to one. I also like the one impressive sense. Great win last time out. Perfect running style for this race. And the two drop of Caribou going for three in a row. Good luck here in race two. Impressive sense, the first one to go into the gate. Drop a caribou, the slight favorite at eight to five is in. Next up is Pucker. Alphabetical's turn. Just two left to load. Doug's pal. And just waiting on Silent Musketeer on the outside. The field is set, they're at the post. And they're off. On the inside, drop a caribou. Away well on the outside, Doug's pal. Now takes over as the early leader. 
in between horses, Pucker showing speed. Drop a caribou back to third. Impressive sense holding the rail in fourth. And it's another gap of two lengths back to Silent Musketeer and four more to Alphabetical, who is the early trailer. 23 and 2, the opening quarter. And Doug's pal has a lead by a length and a quarter. Pucker on the outside, trying to reel him in. Impressive sense. Holding his position on the rail in between horses. Drop a caribou, showing some extra life. Then it's alphabetical in the trailer now. Silent Musketeer, a quick half mile, 46 and 3. The leader still, Doug's pal. Drop a caribou on the outside. Impressive sense right in behind. It's a drop a caribou with the best stride late at the 16th pole. Drop a caribou is going to win three in a row. Doug's pal, second best. Third's going to go to Impressive Sense and fourth to Pucker. The stewards will post the number two drop a caribou as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Doug's pal. Third to number one, Impressive Sense. And fourth to number three, Pucker. They went the opening quarter 23 and two. The half 46 and three. Five furlongs, 59 and four. Time for the six furlongs, 113 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number two, that's number two, Drop a Caribou. Drop a Caribou is a dark bear, brown gelding, four years old, by Where's the Ring. Out of the mare, Stormy Adu, by Selleck. Owned by Black Diamond and Kenneth Lee Gardipi. Trained by Tom Gardipi Jr. And ridden to victory by Ronald Alley. Time for the six furlongs, one thirteen and two.
in the upcoming third race, the Bridgeport Office Solutions Purse. Kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. There are no changes. We'll carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five. There's no changes in race four or race five. Turning your program to race number six. Scratch number five. Better make that two. Number seven, I love my life. We'll race with a tongue tie on. Turning your program to race number seven. Number one, Dacamo Rhodes. The owner should read Steve Keplin Sr. The Bridgeport Office Solutions Purse. Here in race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. They go to post in 15 minutes. And welcome back down the paddock for race number three. We have an allowance optional $10,000 claimer for Phillies and Mares, three olds and up. They're gonna go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number two. Well stretch, drop a caribou, three in a row. Yep, uh, didn't have a clean trip, you called No, it. not at all on the turn. Got in a little trouble just past the three eighths pole. And then just wore down Doug's pal who ran a big race. Huge. Huge race, uh, just to get beat was handily second. So really good first out. Be ready for him next. Uh, Next start. Well, alphabetical, uh, I kind of went in the wrong order. I started at Z, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that got me out of that show parlay. Okay, on to race number three, Stretch. Who do you like? Okay, let's go to the speed that we haven't seen a horse go gate to wire. but No, they both ran second, though. They both ran second, and you could say maybe the better horse won the race. So we'll just uh, sit there. Go to the three as a top selection. I like the price at five to two. This horse showed... Huge amount of speed in a stake race against some of the top uh, fillies and mares on the grounds off a, a bit of a layoff and just got beat late. They are going a little bit farther, uh, but that that's okay. I like that seven. The key to this race, this horse that I, I like uh, quite a bit is that Gulfstream Park race in a really tough, was three-year-olds, but that's okay. A competitive race against some very nice horses that raced at Gulfstream last August. Ran evenly. That's impressive. I think this horse is going to, you know, uh, second off the layoff, be that much better. You look at the stats of, of Keplin, he's got a two of, two of five with a nice ROI on second start off a layoff. So, top pick for me. Yeah, and there really isn't a lot of speed in this race. Another horse I like, number six, Dixie Moe. Dixie Moe ran against Kate Princess, who had it all her own way, and she drew off easy to win by four and a quarter that day. And Dixie Moe was in the photo, only a half a length out of second money. 
I think definitely she's going to move forward. She likes to go longer. She gets an extra half a furlong. And if Miss Z is tiring late, watch for Dixie Mo to come at her. For sure, for sure. And then uh, my this happened to be my second. Your third pick is uh, the two Chicago River moving up in class. This is not an easy uh, optional claimer. You've got a couple that uh, have been competitive. Your your second selection, the six, has seven wins, but it's just been running so game. Just happened to lose to a game horse last time. It was three lengths clear of the rest of the field that day. Only lost to Cage Princess by a uh, short distance. So you kind of have a comparison of who raced who. This horse certainly belongs. Yeah, definitely does. Well, that was the day that, wait a second, Cage Princess battled it out on the front. Also like number five, Adams Creed. Made every step a winning one late down the lane to beat Mechanic Susie and Takati Gold. Adams Creed wasn't an allowance non two lifer. Now moves up against multiple winners in here. This will be a tougher task, but I really like the way Adams Creed finished. It wasn't like Mechanic Susie was stopping. It was more like Adams Creed found a little bit more. Now goes from five to six furlongs and ran some good races at Golden Gate previously. We'll see how Adams Creed kind of fits into this race. For sure. The longest shot on the boards, the four, uh, hasn't had, uh, both races have not been very good, but maybe this one's going to improve. If you look at last year, had three wins, three of eight uh, at ASD, so clearly likes the track. Maybe just trying to find herself here. I, she, I think she's going to improve. I don't know if she'll you know, maybe running for third or so. And the other horse to look at is number one, Sky Tizzy. Sky Tizzy's first start here at the Downs was in an allowance non two lifer, and she ran against the boys. And Crown Royal was just much the best in there. Came back in the one and only and ran against Spittin' Kitten, who hit the front end and ended up going wire to wire. And she came back and won again last night. So Sky Tizzy was against tough ones, but it, she is a three year old tackling older horses in here, and that's not an easy task. At this time of the year, it's, the three-year-olds are coming along more in the middle, but they more flourish, I think, in late September, uh, October-ish. So Sky Tizzy, I think she's bit up against it, and that's why she's 10 to 1. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number three. Jackpot pick five time, over $200,000. Right. In the pool, stretch. Let's try and get it. Yeah, let's try to get it again. Or at least get a piece. I'll get a piece, yes. I've got two tickets today. Two tickets. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to. You're spending money. Yeah, 101 total, so I need a loony from your car change. Hey, no problem. I went down there and grabbed a whole bunch of toonies. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, So, two, three, six with all in the fourth, and then one and six, and then two and three, and then one, three, four, six, seven, eight in the last. Small ticket, if you and which is only fourteen forty, which you can pick it up at depending on your your budget or your partners. Two three with one six, king the six in the fifth, two and three in the sixth race, and all in the last. And for our fans around the world that don't know what a toonie <laughs> is, I, I never even thought about that. That's a two dollar coin, yes. and I have lots of them because you know I spend twenty bucks and uh, I usually get back some change, or I like betting sixteen dollar tickets. And I like those tickets in hand at the wicket. For sure. Well, and you're planning ahead for show parlay Wednesday. Well, so. you know, I usually need to reload. But I'm going to take a 20 cent pick five. I'm taking two, three, six in here. And I'm going to take three, six with one, three, five, six, seven with two, three and round it out with three, six, seven, eight. That's a $48 ticket. Stretch, you're still alive. And I'm grabbing car change. I want back in. All right, you're back in. So I'm all back. right. All right. The, that's the car change, as you can oh, see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's pretty good graphics. That doesn't look like my car, but uh, it actually looks better. Great work on production crew. Our special guest, we have Mitch on uh, production crew today. Uh, 11 show on three. And myself, I'm going 10 to show on the six, Dixie Mo. Good luck with all your wagers here in race three. And we'll see you back for race four. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering.
Sports on the track for race number three, the Bridgeport Office Solutions Purse. They're going to go six furlongs for $16,500. Number one is Sky Tizzy, owned by Mike Powers, trained by Jerry Gorno, with Praven Badri. Number two is Chicago River, owned by Shelly Brown, Gene McEwen, and Black Sox Stables, trained by Shelly Brown, with Demario Bino. Number three is Miss Z, owned by Parker Wallette, trained by Steve Kaplan Jr., with Tim Tarasenko. Number four is Barefoot Dancer, owned by Back on Track Stables, trained by Jennifer Jordan, with Nyron Austin. Number five is Adams Creed, owned by Wind Dancer Stable, trained by Winnie Anderson, with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Rounding out the field is number six, Dixie Moe, owned by Jerry Gowdy and Rick Wise, Trained by Rick Wise with Antonio Whitehall. The Bridgeport Office Solutions Purse. Kicking off jackpot pick five here in race number three. They go to post in three minutes. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, some talented girls going six furlongs here. Uh, I'm going to start right when the three is, is a lukewarm favorite at two to one. She ran a great race last time. I'm hoping for a similar race. She, she showed lots of speed. See if she can just carry it the entire six furlongs. If she can, watch out. Others to look at. That's the two, Chicago River. We'll be sitting just off and try to make a late run. Been very game. And the kind of the class of the field would be the six. Lots of wins. Just can't get too far back. So I'll give you three, two, and six. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on the three. She ran lights out in the cool, excellent stake race for the best filly of mares on the grounds. There is no other speed in here. So she's going to be able to totally control it, probably slow it down if she can. And if she does do that, she's going to be tough to beat. I like number six, Dixie Moe. Ran a good fourth last time out, beaten in the photo by a half a length for second. I think she improves and the two Chicago River has been running lights out in the first two starts here at ASD. So I'm three, six, and two. Good luck here in race three.
Sky Tizzy, after patiently waiting behind the gate, is the first one in. Chicago River, she finds her spot. Next up, the 9-5 to five favorite, that's Miss Z. She goes in. Barefoot Dancer's turn. Just two left to load. Adam's Creed. Now just waiting on Dixie Moe to the outside. She's now in. They're at the post. And they're off. Quickly from the middle of the track, Miss Z sprints clear by two. On the inside, hard ridden Sky Tizzy. To the outside, Adams Creed in a good position in second. Sky Tizzy back to third, Chicago River. On the outside in fourth. Then it's Dixie Mo a length behind. And three more to the trailer. Barefoot Dancer. The opening quarter a quick 22 and 4. And Miss Z has the lead by four. Back in second, Adams Creed. Gonna try and reel her in from here. Back in third on the rail, Chicago River. Another gap back to... Dixie Moe and Barefoot Dancer. Sky Tizzy the trailer. They hit the head of the lane. The half a sizzling 45 and 3. Miss Z is shortening strides, but she still has a lead by three. Adams Creed gonna try and get her, but Miss Z, she's hanging on, and she's gonna win by two and a half. Second to Adams Creed, third Chicago River. Close for fourth. George will post to number three, Miss Z, as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Adams Creed. Third to number two, Chicago River. And fourth to number six, Dixie Moe. They went the opening quarter 22 and four. The half 45 and three. Five furlongs, 58 and two. Five for the six furlongs, 112 and two. Now entering the winner's inning closure, the official winner of the Bridgeport Office Solutions purse, that's number three, Miss Zia. 
Miss Z is a dark bear, brown filly, four years old, by Mr. Z. Out of the mare, Misty Michelle, by K1 King. Owned by Parker Wallet. Trained by Steve Kaplan Jr. And ridden to victory by Tim Tarasenko. Time for the six furlongs, one, twelve, and two. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race. The Adeus Mike Purse kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. There are no changes. We'll carry on with the changes in the pick four. There are no changes in race number five. Turning a program to race number six. Scratch number five. Better make that two. Number seven, I love my life will race with the tongue tie on. Now turning your program to race number seven, number one, Dacamo Rose. The owner should read Steve Kaplan Sr. The Adeus Mike Purse here in race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. And we've drawn our VIP fan of the night. Congratulations goes out to Brittany Bowman. That's Brittany Bowman. Congratulations, you're our VIP fan of the night. Please report to guest services on the main floor, South End. Well, besides the excitement of racing and chasing the ace, Big events will be staged here at the Downs this summer, including the Canada Day Fireworks and Festival. It's going to be featuring food trucks, artisans, vendors, kids' activities, live music, and of course, a spectacular fireworks display by Campfire Pyrotechnics. Tickets are just $10, five and under free, Go to asdowns.com for more information.
Welcome back down the paddock for race number four. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering with a $5,500 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, they're going to go six furlongs. Let's take a look back at race number three. Plain and simply, Miss Z was the best. Yes. Uh, uh, the jockey went as fast and as far as he could go. And, and I thought he'd slow it down, but... Uh, no, and... and Sometimes that's the best way to go. Put uh, kind of takes the heart out of all the other ones, and and just had enough left. And, and uh, the five ran a very nice game second, uh, chasing Adams Creed. That was one that you'd mentioned. Yeah, and chased the whole way around, and nobody closed. I guess uh, kind of mentioned that the six probably needs the two turns are a little bit longer, and and that's kind of what I thought too. So that'd be better back. Uh, Better next time. Yeah, that was the fastest half mile so far of the week. All right, on to race number four, Stretch. Who do you like? Okay. A tough field. You saw my pick five ticket, uh, the ever-popular all ticket, and that's kind of what you're going to see in my pick four ticket. But let's find a horse to go with. Let's start start with the one dropping in class, coming out of a, a pretty tough uh, couple fields. And taking a pile of money. Taking a pile of money. I didn't expect this. Um, it's gray, so they always go a little bit faster, apparently. Whatever, okay, that's what everybody tells me. Just, sure. So, so I, I haven't, I can't verify that, but if, if everybody tells me, it must be the truth. Uh, ne- I hopefully gets a better trip. Was post eight, post nine last time. Hopefully stays on the rail and uh, kind of a clean trip. Uh, Gavin and Chow's been riding well, so hopefully he keeps going. Yeah, he's already got a win on the card with uh, trainer Michael Nault. I like number six, Not Afraid. Tim Tarasenko just won the last race, wire to wire. And I think he's going to try and do the same thing in here. Not Afraid duped it out in really quick fractions last time out. Put away the other horse and cruised to easy victory by seven. And that horse was bite the bullet, bro. What did that horse do? It came back and ended up going wire to wire out of that race. So Not Afraid was in good company. Yeah, it was restricted to Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North South Dakota breads. But open company, this horse does fit very well in this race. Agree with you. Absolutely. My third selection, you know, that was six was my second. Uh, Julia, uh, find the four out there for me. Seven to one. Race for this level last year, uh, the 5,000, 5,500, same thing. Um, Belongs ran a real nice race last time. Press took over, looked good doing it. Then always good when the horse wins and then has a workout. So there's even more room for this horse to improve. Horse certainly belongs. Seven to one is great value. I will take seven to one if it stays at that price. Yeah, another horse I like, number three, my boy Lollipop. Has the chasing role last time out with the eventual winner, X Checker. X Checker after that race. Just ran the other night, jumped up to the first level allowance, was in for the 10,000, and got the win. So that makes my boy Lollipop look even better coming back at this same level of 5,500. We'll have to chase number six, not afraid. But that same race, already gone the six furlongs. I think that's a big key. So that's why I put him second best. For sure. I'll go to the five since two is your selection. Let's go to the five. The horse did not have a very good uh, first race, went for 75, drops down. Throw that race completely out. And before that race, last year ran very well at five uh, at the $5,000 level. I had uh, a couple wins at ASD, was uh, four of six at that time, four of five in the money. Uh, this is one of those horses that I think is going to wake up second start. Probably the price is going to go higher than eight to one, but uh, somebody to consider maybe in the pick four or at least uh, maybe a part of the exactly. Yeah, another horse that I like a little bit in here. That's number two, Lukenbacher. Lukenbacher was a winner at Fawner at the 2,500 non winners of the year and was really well respected in there. Was only a four horse field and was uh, just over even money. Ran against X Checker and my boy Lollipop. Lost by three and a half to the three horse. But I think that horse might have just needed that start over the local track. This horse has races down in fairgrounds and Louisiana Downs that would fit so well here. And Jerry Gorno is on fire. So I like Lukenbacher. Four, six, seven, eight. That's 72. Want to spend the hundy. 28 place on one. 
All right, and myself, I'm taking three and six in here. Then I'm going to take the five, six, seven in race six to two and three. Round it out with three, six, seven, and eight. A one dollar ticket, forty eight dollars. And yes, my car change uh, went by the wayside. But stretch, you are still alive. I am alive. still going, and uh, I've got fourteen. Then stick a fork in me. Yeah, you're done. So 14 show on the one. It's a tough race. I'm hoping to get a little too much fun downstairs they with are. this. But you have a week to save up car change all week. So yeah, that is true. You'll be back next week. I'll be Wednesday. golfing a couple times. Yep. There you go. 14 show one. Let's hope we can keep it going. Uh, pools have been great in the pick four. Uh, jump in yesterday was over 100,000. So uh, I don't feel any pressure in this leg. That's good. Uh, yeah, with that all button, you're kind of safe. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number four, and we'll see you back for race five. on the track for race number four, the Adidas Mike Purse. They're going to go six furlongs for $13,200. Number one is Dino, owned by 82 Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Dalt with Chavi and Chow. Number two is Lukenbacher, owned and trained by Jerry Gorno with Praven Badri. Number three is My Boy Lollipop, owned by SNS Racing, trained by Maria Stanford with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Den's a Rebel, owned by Karen Bjarnson, trained by Tom Gardepe Jr. with Ronald Alley. The five is Freudian Sip, owned by Silver D Stable, trained by Shelley Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Rounding out the field is number six, Not Afraid, owned by Tom Boyko, trained by Carl Anderson, with Tim Tarasenko. The Adidas Mike Purse, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering here in race number four. They go to post in three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Six furlongs kicking off the pick four in a very competitive and tricky pick uh, six horse field here. I'm going to start on the one getting nine to two. They were betting them a little bit early. Why would you bet this horse doesn't look good on form but was racing much tougher? I'm hoping it gets a nice trip on the rail and gets through and Chow gets his second win of the day. The big favorite is the six. I like the favorite, absolutely. It's just such a tough race to take a favorite. And another bit of a price horse is Dan Rebel. He just likes to win races. He'll be sitting off and take making a late run. Wide open race, but let's go one, six, and four. Yeah, Stretch, I am going with the favorite. Number six, Not Afraid. This horse won so easy last time out, drawing off to win by seven after battling for a half a mile. I don't see a lot of speed in here, so I think it's not a Freight's race to lose. I also like the three, my boy Lollipop, lost to X Checker, who came back, won again at the $10,000 level. And I like the two horse, Lukenbacher, to round out my top three. Good luck here in race four. Dino Lukenbacher and my boy Lollipop tucked away in the starting gate. Next in, Dan Zarebel. Just two left to load. Freudian Sip. And just waiting on the overwhelming favorite on the outside at three to five. Not afraid. The field is set. They're at the post.
and they're off. From the outside, not afraid, quickly. Out to grab the early lead and opening up by four. On the inside, Dino grabbing good positioning. Dan's a rebel on his outside in third. Back in fourth, that's going to be Freudian Sip with my boy Lollipop and the early trailer will be Lukenbacher, but only five out of it. The opening quarter, 23 and two. Not afraid, and Dino. These two are battling it out. Danza Rebel waiting to make the move. Three wide, a gap of three more to Freudian Sip. And the trailers are still my boy Lollipop and Lukenbacher. They hit the head of the lane. The half 46 and three. It's not afraid. Repelling them all and drawing off now by three. Not afraid. Much the best in here. Sixteenth of a mile ago will win by five. Dan's a rebel second best. Third's going to go to Dino and fourth to my boy Lollipop. The Stewart's supposed to number six, not afraid as your race winner. Second goes to number four, Dan Zarebel. Third to number one, Dino. And fourth to number three, my boy, Lollipop. They went the opening quarter 23 and two. The half 46 and three. Five furlongs, 59 and one. Time for the six furlongs, 112. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of the Adeus Mike purse. That's number six, Not Afraid. Not Afraid is a chestnut gelding, five years old, by Vindagari. Out of the mayor, I Ain't Afraid, by Ghost Zapper. Owned by Tom Boyko, trained by Carl Anderson, and ridden to victory by Tim Tarasenko. Time for the six furlongs, one twelve.
Congratulations goes out to jockey Tim Tarasenko, who scores the double. Back-to-back -back winners for jockey Tim Tarasenko. Race four is official in the upcoming fifth race. Our VIP fan of the night first. There are no changes. Kicking off the late pick three here in race number five. And just a reminder that if you are new to racing, to download the new Dark Horse Bets app. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit to their account. The Dark Horse Bets app was designed for people new to horse racing, making wagering simple with smart picks predictions available for all races. Get your free $30 now by signing up for Dark Horse Bets Scan the QR code on the front of your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number four, we had a claim to report. Claimed for $5,500 was number three, My Boy Lollipop, claimed by Sanderson Stables trainer Bruce Sanderson. And welcome back down to the paddock for race number five. We have a $10,000 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non-three-lifers. They're going to go the six furlongs. Let's take a look back at race number four. Well, Tim Tarasenko, first time out in race three, gunned every step of the way. This time, took a hold, had the lead, and was much the best in the end. Yeah, you, if you watch the replay closely, he kind of waited for them, and in the stretch, he, he asked the horse, and you could see the horse actually explode a little bit and, and run that much faster. I, I like the, the attempt on the one pressing to see what, what the six was made of. And the six yeah, was totally. Six, six was just better. And, and that ended up costing him second money without a doubt. Yeah, probably, but uh, I, I, liked, I liked the effort rather than just letting the give the win to the six. So, um, yeah, so typical, you... you People have probably done this. They take the all, and favorite comes in. Yeah, <laughs> well, that happens. that, that's happened a few times. Mostly to you, though, Yeah, because I don't have enough money to take the <laughs> yeah. all button. All right, on to race number five, Stretch. Looks like another big favorite here, currently four to five. Yeah, it ends up to be my uh, top selection in here. The I think there's going to be a pace battle, so I'm looking for a closer. Uh, two back was a really impressive race. Ran against uh, Hard West, who then came back and ran another uh, good effort until the previous one. But just a higher level. You saw the last race on uh, Dino, that same kind of same race, in fact. And this is an easier condition. And so, if I liked uh, Dino, who the one horse in the last one that ran a nice third, uh, I think this is a little bit easier race. The par buyer par is lower. So, I, same real reason. I like just throwing out that last race in the slop and give this horse another shot. Yeah, also had the wide post in there, a couple things going against it. But this is a big drop in class. There's definitely speed in here with number three into Bourbon and the four Miss Lang Skip, who both possess the same running style. So I went to a closer again for second. I went to number five, high rise in the peg, ran an even effort last time out, showed a little bit of late run, but uh, the race was kind of over when the horse did show the run. As Terrawatt went wire to wire, Pop Oscar Whiskey came back to win the 10 non 2 lifer in the very next start. High Rise in the Pig ran a couple big races last year at the maiden allowance and allowance non 2 level. Sitting back and making that run, will be able to do that today. Was beaten by the 7 and the 1, but I think this horse with that start under its belt will progress. So I'm taking a shot for second and getting 10 to 1. Yeah, that, that's that's a fair statement. And I ended up going as the 1 as my second selection. But you see my the 5 is my third, so I, I don't disagree. Uh, basically the same reasons a lot with yours. This horse just ran a nice even race. And I think that uh, runs the same kind of race. Ran competitively at Turf Paradise. And uh, if you look back last year, was it Del Mar? and was competitive there. I think this is your other closer of the race. We mentioned there's lots of speed. Do you need that closer? Yeah, another closer in here is number seven, Kitten. Kitten's first start was a fourth place effort, a length and a quarter behind number one, Armavir, and just ahead of number five, High Rise in the Peg. 
Here's another one that should move forward off of that race. Last year had a good year. Four for eight in the money. A win a second and a couple of thirds. Armavir, I like that horse, but it's already had six starts this year where High Rise and the Peg Kitten, they've only had one. And I think they move forward off that and they don't have to move forward much. I see a lot of these horses in their second start, three to four lengths better than their last effort. And if that is the case, I like these six, five, and I like the seven for third. Sounds good. And let's don't leave out the speed of the speed. And that's going to be the three horse. The uh, showed good speed and just got tired late. Lost to impressive sense. Ran a, a now, deep. now you could have watched that photo. Sorry to butt in here. But into bird, remember he got left? That's true. Because his, the other horse out of the Wendy Anderson barn went to the front. And he had to hustle up there because it is a speed ball. And his hustle was a little too much. Yeah, that's fair. And and so got got tired or stretching out, but has a workout. So just like the other two that uh, you like, Kurt, same kind of angle. I think the speed is going to carry a little bit farther. It's just a matter of how much pressure this horse gets. But, uh, yeah, the speed players who have this horse at 7-2, to two, I think that's about the right price. Yeah, it was in for 5,000, jumps up to 10. Number four is Miss Lang Skip. She ran against the boys first time out. Showed speed for a half a mile before tiring. The comeback race went against the girls, battled it out again, and then succumbed to the battle as beaten by 11. She is the lone girl in the field going against the boys, but with Into Bourbon into here, her running style is only catch me if you can. She's going to have a hard time stealing it. She is going to have a hard time stealing it. I guess if, if the three is a bit of a bad breaker, that, that could potentially That'll happen. definitely help, but uh, it'll be right in the fray anyway and try and catch up to her and least press. For sure. And the last one is the two who has lost to most of these in here already. But again, only two starts. Every reason to kind of improve. Had three wins last year in 2022. Uh, right trip, maybe gets there. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number five. Stretch, what do you have? Okay, I'm going to just try a... Uh, Try wheel, five dollar try wheel, one six with one six with five seven, that's twenty. If you just want to do a one dollar one, that would be four dollars. And myself, I'm going thirty to place on the five high rise in the peg and stretch. Are you still alive? I'm still going. Still, still going. going. Still are, going. Are you at least up to thirteen bucks yet? Sixteen. Oh, there 16. we go. Sixteen. You got the car change, everything at sixteen show and yeah, six. Car change. They're forking me. <laughs> They're doing a little bit of everything. They're having way too much fun down there. Good luck with all your wagers here in race five, and we'll see you back for race six. on the track for race number five our vip and of the night purse they're gonna go six furlongs for thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars number one is armavir owned and trained by jared brown with antonio whitehall number two is unusual account Owned and trained by Bill Kinch with Praven Badry. Number three is Into Bourbon. Owned by Windancer Stable, trained by Winnie Anderson with Neville Stevenson. The four is Miss Langskip. Owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Tim Tarasenko. Number five is High Rise in the Peg. Owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Demario Bino. Number six is Toil and Trouble, owned by John Gannis, trained by Jerry Brown, with Jorge Carreño. Running out the field is number seven, Kitten, owned by Ryan DeJarles and Thomas Howes, trained 
by Ryan DeJarlis with Stanley Shady Jr. Our VIP Fan of the Night purse. Here in race number five, they go to post in three minutes. now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, we're going six furlongs again. We got six boys, one girl in the race. I'm going to start with the big favorite here. Um, should be the favorite, has the talent to uh, sit just off the pace and make a late run, has been running tougher races. Last race wasn't very good, but that's expected, was in the, the off track. Some horses just don't like it. Another one to consider at a bit of a better price, that would be the one at five to one. Same trainer, you've got Antonio Whitehall aboard, should get the trip. The one that's gonna be coming from the way back at 12 to one, if you're a long shot player, that's the five but he won't be near the front. Wait till the end. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I agree with you on the big dropper, number six, Toil in Trouble. This is a massive drop from the first level allowance where the horse ran second two outs ago down to this non-three lifetime event. So I think Toil in Trouble is the one to beat as there is speed to run at. I also like number five, High Rides in the Peg. I think it'll run better then the one did last time out, not to say it'll regress, but I think the five will run better and the seven, Kitten. So I'm gonna give you a six, five, and seven. Good luck here in race five.
Pulse Time! Armavir, an unusual account. Already in the starting gate. Into Bourbon now moves in. Miss Langskip, the lone filly. She gets a little help into the gate. High rise in the peg is next. Just two left to load. The overwhelming two to five favorite, Toil and Trouble. Miss Langskip fractious in the gate. And just waiting on Kitten to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. Breaking a little slow was into Bourbon, who quickly recovers. And is sent out to the early lead with company in Miss Langskip, who also wants the lead, and she's going to get it. Into Bourbon, back to second. Kitten up close early in third. Back on the rail, five lengths back. That's Armavir with Toil and Trouble. To his outside, two more lengths back. Unusual account, and high rise in the peg. The opening quarter, a quick... 22 and 4. It's Miss Langskip and into Bourbon. Making a three wide bid. Kitten. Toil in trouble. Now gonna go five wide. Coming up the rail. Arm Navir. High rise in the peg with some run. And the trailer. Unusual count. They hit the end of the lane. The favorite. Toil in trouble. Now flies on by. And. Opens up on the field. This is Toil and Trouble. Drawing off to win by seven. The battle for second. Unusual account just gets up over Armnevere fourth to Kitten. The Stewart's supposed to number six, Toil and Trouble, Azure Race winner. Second goes to number two, Unusual Account. Third to one, number one, Armnavir. And fourth to number seven, Kitten. They went the opening quarter, 22 and four. The half, 46 and two. Five furlongs, 59 and three. Time for the six furlongs, one, 12 and three.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, our official winner of our VIP Fan of the Night purse, that's number six, Toil and Trouble. Toil and Trouble is a chestnut gelding, five years old, by strong mandate, out of the Mare Magic Shoes by Mineshaft. Owned by John Gannis, trained by Jared Brown, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the six furlongs. One, twelve, and three. Race five is official in the upcoming sixth race. Scratch number five, better make that two. Number seven, I love my life, will race with a tongue tie on. Late double wagering here in race number six. And just a reminder to get your Chasey Ace tickets for our new weekly draw. The Progressive Jackpot, guaranteed at $5,000 if you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets are just $5 and are available online at asdowns-cta.com or in person here at Guest Services or at the VLT cage on the second level. The weekly draw takes place tomorrow so get your tickets now. Proceeds support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, and the Manitoba Lung Association. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace Ticket Program.
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number five, we had a claim to report. Play for $10,000. Was your race winner number six, Toil and Trouble, claimed by Ron Wiley, trainer Devin Gittens. Here we are back down in the paddock for race number six. We have an allowance race for three-year-olds and up that are non-two-lifers. They're going to go six furlong, scratch the five. Better make that two. Number seven, I love my life. We'll run with a tongue tie on. Let's take a look back at race number five. Oil and trouble. Well, it's just so much the best. Yeah, it was one of those rides that uh, Carino knew that uh, he had to Cadillac and just stay out of trouble. You don't want to be stuck on the rail or even well, he behind. He made a five-wide move, yeah. but it, it all didn't matter in no, the end. No, correct, for sure. Um, how, how, how about, so you have a one-to-nine shot win the race. You have a couple of long shots, or one long shot come in. And the one happened to be my, my second selection. The try paid 181 for a dollar in a seven horse field. We kind of talked about could be a, a speed duel. Well, the three and four on the milk. Though. Right. And then your left, and then the, the Superfecta seven horse field paid $650 with the one to nine on top. So you can't say that uh, you can't make money when the favorites win. That's for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay, on to race number six stretch. Who's your top selection? Okay. So uh, let's start with the two, Julie. Where we? There we go. This horse has run back-to-back -back, uh, solid efforts. Seemed to has figured it out as a four-year-old. As a three-year-old, kind of didn't really want to win. The first effort, uh, Kurt and I did like this horse, but I, I can say for myself, I didn't expect a, a ten-length victory by no, this horse. No, not at all. And, so, and then the next one ran a really game effort against uh, Private Frank. I was on Private Frank, but I didn't know if I was going to win the race uh, with with Private Frank because he battled every yeah, step we, of the way. And he won his race by nine, and we liked both those horses, and they ended up putting on a pretty good show. It was a good show. So Yeah, I'm sticking top selection. Five to two is the, is the right price. Yeah, I ended up going to number three, My Noah. My Noah is a horse coming by way of Oaklawn Park, and Mike Tamphorn has brought three horses in in the last week and a half and two of them Terawatt and fresh one they came from will rogers they both won and then he got mr dazzle from woodbine and again was a winning effort so he's three for three on getting horses from someone else my noah has speed but doesn't have to use it as the horse can also close it showed both angles in the last two starts not sure what it's going to do today, but Ronald Daly, he's riding really well. I think he's going to keep in close proximity, probably within a length, maybe two, uh, of Jafafa and be the stalker and try and run him down late. Absolutely. So I, I'm with you. It could have been my top selection. Let's go to the uh, horse that uh, has been robbing me for, for a couple years <laughs> now. That's why I got to call the cops anyway. See how yeah, I played the yeah, name? Yeah, I like in? how you played that in. Yeah. Anyway, I think this horse is going to get a trip along the rail. You don't uh, want to pick him to win? Uh, not to win third. He's, okay. very, he's very good at third. Uh, tries hard, but just doesn't want to win. The numbers are there. Puts him in contention. I like the workout after his last start. I, I think he'd have to improve. He doesn't want to win. He just wants to run second or third anyway. Yeah, and take a look at number six, Barely Regal, has yet to finish worse than second. One win, four seconds, five lifetime starts, ran a good race first time out. Crown Royal just ended up being much the best. 
in that non-two lifer, but Barely Regal fought really hard to get second after not having a great break out of the gate. This is another one that will be forward in the race, probably sitting behind Jafafa and number three, my Noah. So Barely Regal, four to one on the board, even though the horse was a late scratch last time out as it froze in front of the grandstand. We'll see what it does today. Yeah, it, uh, like you said, he'll be going out an early post parade. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go to the seven. Is a is a three year old facing older. Was in a stake race. Ran against a couple real good ones. It was a second start. Ran evenly, and uh, you get Antonio up. So he clearly thinks this horse has a shot because he probably gets a lot of choices and uh, should improve. That first start was a nice one, and then then it's just racing some top three year olds. There, there are no. Top three-year-olds in this race in the state. Yeah, and with the tongue tie on, that can make a big difference on I Love My Life. Uh, number four, Prairie Drifter. Prairie Drifter had a great year last year. Two wins to end off the season, including the restricted Buffalo Stakes going one mile. Had three second-place finishes. All of those were great races to start out the year. Had to unfortunately run against Chicago's Gray and Saxon Saga. Chicago's Gray did put two impressive wins together, including that win in the primetime TV. This is a drop for Prairie Drifter, so don't discount this horse. This horse can definitely run, and you're getting odds at 7 1. Okay, stretch. Let's get our bets here in race number six. What do you got? All right, I've got a $4 exact wheel, the two and the three. And then underneath, of course, call the cops. One, two, three, and five. That's 24. If you just wanted to do the uh, a dollar one, that'd be six dollars. I like the wheel because I don't think the one and five can win it, but I think the two and three can. So you save kind of money and get bet a little bit more that way. Yeah, I'm thinking that the two and three run around the track together, but I like my Noah, so I put it on top with the two for second. Ten dollar track to wheel, six and seven for third. One dollar wheel, two bucks. I'm doing a $10 one for 20. Good luck with all whoa, your wages. Whoa, what a... Oh, yeah, you're still alive in that show parlay thing. <laughs> so there we go. So just off camera. Couldn't get it closed off before you jumped in. No, and Kurt was trying to get me to go on the cops, but I, I'm going to go uh, on come the... Come on. I'm going to stick on the 17th show on the three. All right, good luck with all your wagers here in race six, and we'll see you back for race number seven. on the track for race number six they're gonna go six furlongs for eighteen thousand dollars number one is call the cops owned by dr betty hughes trained by elton dickey with jorge carreño number two is jafafa owned by pierre esquirol trained by Wendy anderson with neville stevenson Number three is My Noah, owned by Let's Dance Stable, trained by Mike Taphorn with Ronald Alley. Number four is Prairie Drifter, owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Devin Giddens with Demario Bino. Number five, better make that two is scratched. Number six is Barely Regal, owned by Cam Ziprick, Charles Fool, Charles. Steve and Julian Fulliard and Mark Sainer, trained by Devin Gittens with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Rounding out the field is number seven, I Love My Life, owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lise Pruett with Antonio Whitehall. Post time for race number six, three minutes away.
now two minutes to post time at ASD. Another competitive uh, race for the some some talented boys in here going six furlongs. I'm going to start on the two one. The co favorite has been running so good uh, all year. Seems to be better. Seems to have figured out how to how to win and run well at four. I think a similar effort there could be on in the duel. Could come just off. I think the horse is that versatile. The Invader from uh, Oakland Park down south. Always tough racing there. Went to the lead last time, came off the pace. This the two back that could be the the angle. Call the cops. You want a show bet and uh, sh uh, kind of get a payout? That would be the one. Let's go two, three, and one. Kurt. Yeah, stretch. I'm with you on the two and three, just in a different order. I took my Noah. The horse has speed or can come off the pace. I think it's coming off the pace today. Two Oaklawn horses that have come here this year. Both of them are undefeated, two wins each, and this one was running well at the $10,000 level. So I'm gonna take three and two and add on number seven. I love my life with the tongue tie on. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number six. Call the cops, the first one to step into the starting gate. Next up, the co favorite at two to one, Jafafa. My Noah, the other co favorite, now second favorite at two to one, is now in. Prairie Drifter steps up and in. Two left to load. Barely Regal.
Now just waiting on I love my life to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. My Noah quickly away and sent hard to the lead. Prairie Drifter now on the inside. Job Fafa wants a piece of the early lead also. Three across the track. Barely real is going to be the stalker. Four wide. Then I love my life and the early trailer. Call the cops. Job Fafa now takes over through an opening quarter of 22 and four. My Noah. Stalking on the outside, still with plenty of horse. Settled back in third, barely regal. I love my life on the rail. Prairie Drifter and call the cops, seven out of it. They're coming up to the half, and it's my Noah and Jafafa. These two through a half in 45 and four have opened up five on the field. On the inside, Jeff Hoffa, my Noah now takes over, and my Noah, a sixteenth of a mile to go, and is going to get the win, second best, Jeff Hoffa, third's going to go to call the cops, and fourth, I love my life. The Stewart's supposed to number three, my Noah, as the race winner. Second goes to number two, Jeff Hoffa. Third to number one, call the cops. Fourth to number seven, I love my life. And fifth to number four, Prairie Drifter. They went the opening quarter, 22 and four. The half, 45 and four. Three quarters, 58 and two. Time for the six furlongs, a sharp. One eleven and four. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number six. That's number three, My Noah. My Noah is a big elding, four years old, by a treaties, out of the mare, Miss Cap, by Capote. Owned by Let's Dance Stable, trained by Mike Tamporn, and ridden to victory by Ronald Alley. Time for the six furlongs, one eleven and four. Congratulations goes out to jockey Ronald Alley, who scores a double. Two wins for jockey Ronald Alley. Race six is official in the upcoming seventh race. Number one, Duckamo Rose. The owner should read 
Steve Kaplan Sr. Super high five wagering here in race number seven. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine, $4.75, and 25% off all appetizers, plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m. Welcome back down paddock for race number seven for this $3,000 claimer. For Phillies mares three and up that are non-winners of the year, they're going to go with six furlongs. Quick look back at race number three, Oaklawn Park. Now five for five at Assiniboy Downs, and Mike Caphorn getting a new one is now four for four. Wow, yes, that was the Golden Gate last year. Now we got Oaklawn. Oaklawn's always been good. Another great match race in the stretch. It's just unfortunately... Uh, the the Jeff Jeffafa, um, Jeff F F Jeff Fafa, Jeff Fafa. Um, had, had another bad beat. Hopefully, he can't handle too many many bad beats. 
And I, I, you know, I never like to cheer against somebody's downfall. But yeah, you're cheering against my Triactor, my ten dollar one. With call the cops. Uh, I want to call the cops because I got robbed. You did. You wanted me to go show. I should have put the show on that instead of the three. Would have had that much more. And so if I add it, I get two hundred ninety five dollars. But I guess I don't need the money. No. All right. Let's move hopefully on. Hopefully, people out there threw call the cops, cops in for the third, third. cash. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. That'd be okay, good. Okay. On to race number seven. Field a nine to close it out, close out the week. This could be one of the big upsetters of the day because it's been pretty chalky. It, it Absolutely. So if a person had all in their pick five, that would be good, right? Yeah, that would be good, but uh, you might lose money. Well, I only spent $14.40. Well, well, that's okay then. So um, anyway, and we're both alive on the pick uh, four. and I that's sure hope, hope so. so. I think everybody's alive on the pick four. But that's okay. Let's, let's think. Uh, Finish it anyway. It is tricky race. Let's start with the one. You can find there's the one, Julie. Excellent. Getting nine to one. First race out ran a really nice race. Uh, pressed and then just got a uh, loss to the horse that has now won back to back. Your horse there. Um, so that upgrades that race. The next race had a little bit of trouble. Uh, didn't get out that well and then kind of finished evenly. I'm hoping gets a better trip. It's all about trips. All of these horses are very similar in speed, and so it is about where everybody gets the position. It's, it's a good size field of nine, so look for your value. That's my value horse. Yours yeah. is even more. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of horses that could show speed in here. The one, the two, the seven, eight, and nine. All of them had showed speed in the past. Mine, well, showed speed going around the ground, but not short. I went to the six wit nine. Last time out, Gold Diggin' Darlin hit the front end and went wire to wire. And Wit 9 was way at the back of the field, but passed half of it and then plain and simply ran out of ground. Got beat by six. Gets an extra half a furlong today. Stanley Chady Jr. jumps aboard. And I'm expecting this horse to close very late. And I'm loving the 24 to 1. Yeah, this is this is one of those races. You called it last year on, on one flying late, and that's what's going to happen. Second choice, we both have the horse in there. That's the three, two steps faster. You know what you get with her. She kind of runs, makes a late move. She was clearly second best last time. Beat many of these last time. At six furlongs, she would have won. She She's one of those... Uh, Safe types if you're trying to finish a show parlay. We'll see if I'm safe or going for it. Yeah, she ran really, really good. Another horse I like, number eight, Harlan's Commission. This horse won, or hasn't won yet this year, but it's run some good races, was beaten by two steps faster. And like I said, there is horses that can go to the front, but if they let Harlan's Commission go out to the front, control the early fractions, this horse could be long gone. Correct. Yes, for sure. One of my... Three to one, not bad Not odds. bad, not bad. Yep. And let's go to the four. This horse opened with early money last time, went off as a, the, the favorite at, at, a, at a higher price. Uh, broke a step slow, as it says in the notes, and just raced wide and kind of ran, ran around the track. Clearly, the horse needed a start. I'm going to give this horse another shot because I'm... I, I think this horse is going to go higher than nine to two, probably even higher. And if it can run back to some of those races last year, anywhere close, I think this horse puts the horse in contention. These are the ones I like. The public jumps off. Um, they're on it one week, jump off the next, and, and you get paid. Yeah, another horse to look at, number seven, Thrills Legacy. This horse is taking a drop in class, was in the non-four lifer, got the job done in there, then had to run into a very tough buy all who had a great campaign last year. She won her first start for 5,500 this year and got beat just yesterday as the big favorite at 5,500. Then had to run against Spy Star and Liaison Tune. Starts out the year at 3,000. Three five-eighths works coming in. Seven to one. I think this one has big value. For sure. And you know one horse that will not be on the lead, and that's the five. He'll be at the back of the pack and closing late. I've cashed a bit on him over the years. Twelve Post-12 last time, it's a little bit better spot. Maybe can pick up the pieces for a, a third or fourth in, in a race that's going to pay really well, whether it's the Superfecta or the high five. Yeah, also look at number nine, kick a little booty. Kick a little booty. Had a good year last year. 
Two wins, two seconds, and a third. A lackluster effort in the first outing, but expect a better rebound. For sure. Similar with the two. A terrible first race. Didn't show anything, but is better than that. I expect to see this horse run a little bit better, show some speed. Surprised a few times last year. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race seven. Stretch, what do you have? Okay, I've got this 10 win, 20 place, but I, I, no, I've got to make, I'm trying to hit the home run with the trifecta. Here we go. All right. Stretch, change alert, Mitch. Let's call Imagine it. Imagine that. I was waiting for this. Yes, I was waiting. We're going to make it a tri wheel. It's going to be one, three, four, seven with one, three, four, seven with one, three, four, six, seven, eight, forty eight dollars. I do have the pick five and a bunch of live in the pick four, so I can cover it if I don't get it. I don't see my six horse in the top two. No, it's uh, it's in third. Oh, okay. I, so I you... think you should change that to 20, 40 show six. But if... Oh, no. I like this 10 to 1. I'm going 20 to win, 20 to place on number six, wit nine. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven, and we'll see you back Monday, 645 Central, after we hear Stretch say he's alive in the show parlay i've had the win bet on it changing it to the one 22 show on the one to try to complete show parlay wednesday all right and 645 central monday we'll see you then for asd live So on the track for race number seven, they're going to go six furlongs for $10,000. Number one is Dacamo Rose, owned by Steve Keplin Sr., trained by Steve Keplin Jr., with Antonio Whitehall. Number two is Hey Hey Runaway, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Jared Brown, with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Two Steps Faster, owned by Wendy Anderson and Keith Wright, trained by Wendy Anderson with Demario Bino. Number four is Sunday Scheming, owned by Black Diamond Stable, trained by Tom Gardipe Jr. with Ronald Alley. Number five is Videra, owned and trained by Doug Mustard with Chavi and Chow. Number six is Wit Nine, owned by Catherine Ursel, trained by Carl Anderson with Stanley Shady Jr. Number seven is Thrills Legacy, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Courtney Ross with Neville Stevenson. The eight is Harlan's Commission, owned and trained by Jerry Gorno with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Running out the field is number nine, Kick a Little Booty. Owned by Devin Gittens and Claremont Paris. Trained by Devin Gittens with Praven Badry. Super high five wagering. Here in race seven, they go to post in three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Closing it out uh, on, on the week, going six furlongs. If you're stuck, uh, maybe down a few dollars, this is a race for you. It is an absolute wide open race. I am going to start on the one. Didn't think this horse would be bet down this much. Good first out, not as good second out. Needs that better trip. Gets the right trip. Does belong at this level. Uh, you've got the top jockey. Others to look at. That's the three. She likes to kind of finish in the money. She kind of runs evenly. Let's go back to the four. At, uh, should have a better effort. You want a bomber to help really get out? That's the five. Maybe can finish third or fourth. But I'll give you one, three, and four. Yeah, with no clear-cut speed in here, I think there might be a log jam out front. So I went to number six, wit nine. Made up a ton of ground last time out. From the back of the field, gets an extra half a furlong. And with the lack of clear-cut speed... A lot of people might get the same idea and set up for the closer. I also like number eight, Harlan's com commission. Very consistent and two steps faster. That is the horse to beat. Good luck here in race seven. Jacomo Rhodes leads him in for the nightcap. Hey, hey, Runaway is in. Two steps faster. The current three to one favorite is in. Sunday Scheming is next. Vidira steps up and in. Next up, Wit Nine. Thrills Legacy also in. 
Two left to load. Harlan's commission. And just waiting on kick a little booty to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, hey, hey, run away. And two steps faster shows speed. And Dacamo Rose. So it's Dacamo Rose and hey, hey, run away. They're the early pace setters. Settle back in third. Two steps faster with Harlan's commission. On the outside in fourth. Another length back. Racing as a pair. Kick a little booty. And Thrills Legacy. And then three more to the trailers. And be Sunday scheming. And went nine. The opening quarter. 23 seconds. Dacamo Rose with the lead. But Harlan's commission. Comes flying on the outside and goes on by. Two steps faster in hot pursuit. Falling back to third, Dacamo Rose. Starting to split horses. Wit nine on the outside. But Harlan's commission. What a move. And is opening up on this field. Up by five. A sixteenth of a mile to go. This is all Harlan's commission. Two steps faster, second. Third's going to go to Sunday Scheming. Fourth to kick a little booty. And fifth to Videra. The Stewart's supposed to number eight, Harlan's Commission, as your race winner. Second goes to number three, two steps faster. Third to number four, Sunday Scheming. Fourth to number nine, kick a little booty. And fifth to number five, Videra. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. The half, 47 seconds. Five furlongs, 59 and four. Time for the six furlongs, 113 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race seven. That's number eight, Harlan's Commission. Harlan's Commission is a dark bear, brown mare, nine years old, by field commission. How did the mare unveil the mask by Harlan's Holiday? Owned and trained by Jerry Gorno and ridden a victory by Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Time for the six furlongs, one thirteen and two. Well, now head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level. Beer, shots, and wine, 475, and 25% off all appetizers. Racing resumes next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7.30. See you then. But now, head up to the clubhouse for crazy hour.
in MHC, this is what it is right here. This is awesome. There are going to be prices coming. This room mm -hmm. is going to be nuts tomorrow. These players are unbelievable. This is your chance to be in the spotlight. When all eight tracks are in play, there's going to be bombs dropping left and right. There's going to be screaming and yelling. Hawthorne is probably the best value out there for cash tournament play. If you're serious about contests and you want to experience the NHC, you have to find a way to get to Hawthorne as many times as you can. You absolutely have to. The reason I think the Hawthorne contests are the best value in contests, there's no entry fee. Hawthorne is giving away seats. You have to play in those events because, you know, we all know what the cost of an online NHC seat is. I've got some free entries. Come out to Hawthorne, so I made my first trip and had a great time. If you're playing contests, Hawthorne is a great spot to be. You know, there's no take out of the contest. So it's a great, great place for horse players to either qualify here or play in some live money contests.